Now, Angela Ciaris, an astronomer and head researcher at University College London, joins us for more on this story. Good evening to you and welcome. Why is this discovery of water on the exoplanet significant? Now, does this mean that uh, life exists in other places of the universe? No, we cannot answer this question with current observations. We can say that this planet, from what we know right now, is the best candidate to be a habitable place out there in the universe. But in order to find signs of life or a really habitable planet, we will need much better observations. This will come in the next uh, decades. So unless we have these big telescopes, we cannot say more than the existence of water and the existence of an atmosphere around this planet, which has a very pleasant temperature similar to the Earth. What more do we know about this exoplanet? Is it a giant, a gas giant, or does it have a surface to speak of? So we know that the planet has a density that is similar to the Mars or the Moon. This, is, this means probably that it has a surface. It is not, it's definitely not a gas giant. We know that based on the mass and the radius, but Given, uh, uh, given that we cannot really observe the surface and we, only, we are only sensitive to the atmosphere, we cannot say much about the surface itself. The probabilities are, to the extent that uh, I can think of, that there is a surface. The exoplanet is said to be in the habitable zone, but the dwarf star around which it's orbiting is said to be more active. How does this complicate things for the evidence and the emergence of life? This is an excellent question. Indeed, these stars are more active than our sun, so space weather there is worse. But until now, uh, there have been uh, many studies that are trying to understand whether this is uh, hostile or not. So, for example, this star is not that active as, for example, TRAPPIST-1. It has a temperature of 3,500 Kelvin, so it has activity uh, and it has uh, some uh, more uh, harmful radiation, but we have not detected any flares, so very hostile events. In addition, if you think of an atmosphere that it is bigger than ours, so this is probably working as a better shield against this radiation. How is the water found on this exoplanet different from the water that has been found on the moons of Jupiter and Saturn? So the water in uh, the icy, the, the water in the icy moons is uh, is ocean, and it, it's really, it's liquid water. Here we're talking about gaseous water. We don't know if there is indeed liquid water. We know that the planet can support liquid water. So presumably, if it has a surface, it could have also liquid water, but we cannot say this for sure. In the moons, the water is beneath the surface. It's something different. The, the moons are covered with ice crust, and the water lives beneath that. So what is the next step? What else besides the water needs to be present to confirm the existence of life? The next step in studying this exoplanet will be the James Webb Space Telescope it will be able to give us a much better spectrum of this planet and it is a very interested one, interesting one. So I believe that we will try to find methane as the next step. As we know on Earth, methane is a sign of life. It is produced because life is here. We don't know if life outside in the universe is working with the same way. Life in a different place could evolve in a different way and produce different kinds of gases. What we are actually looking at is gases that shouldn't be there. Assuming that we put together a mix of certain elements, we expect certain molecules to exist in an atmosphere. If we find something that it's not right and it shouldn't be there, it is a sign that it could be caused by life. Of course, there are other sources, but this is what we call bio.